Uh, here, we're going to be focusing more on the non-uniformity. So if you have a situation where the outcomes do not have the same likelihood, it's called non-uniform. So let's take a look at this example and see where it falls. Becca spins the spinner below. The outcome will either be that the spinner lands on an odd number or on an even number. Is this probability mo uh, model uniform? Well, you can see that you have a two and a four. Those are the even numbers, only two spots, but you have three odd spots. So you can answer the question without doing any, anything more. When you have an unequal number of outcomes, then of course it's gonna be non-uniform. So is this uh, model uniform or non-uniform? I'm gonna say non-uniform, NU means non-uniform. Now let's go a little farther and calculate this. If the probability of an even number is pulling even numbers or spinning even numbers, how many even numbers do we have? Two, four, and that's it. There's only two of them, two, four. So there's two outcomes out of a total of five positions, two fifths is the, uh, is the uh, probability of landing on an even number. Now the probability of landing on an odd number is I have three positions, one, three, and five. So three fifths. And you can just see that the outcomes are unequal. Now you have two fifths and three fifths. Now let me ask you a question. What is the probability of landing on any number? Well, if you think about it, it's 100% because you have to land somewhere. But if you also notice, if you take the probability of landing on an even number and the probability of landing on an odd number and add them together, what do you get? Well, the denominators are the same. Two plus three is five. So you get five over five or a probability of one. So you know intuitively that the probability of an even number plus the probability of an odd number has to add up to one because in the spinner, you have to land on an even or an odd number. So I'm just showing you that in these cases, the probabilities of all of the outcomes, once you calculate them, they have to add to one because you're always going to get one of those outcomes. You have to, so they have to all add up to one. We know this is non-uniform because the outcomes here have differing probabilities. And there's fewer even spaces, so the probability of that happening is less. Here is problem number two. Sarah spins the spinner below. The outcome will be the spinner lands on a shaded region or it does not. Is this uniform or non-uniform? Shaded region or non-shaded region. So the probability of shaded, right, is how many shaded regions do we have? One, two, three, out of a total of six possible positions, which reduces to one half. And the probability of not shaded is how many of those positions do we have? We again have one, two, three out of six. So we get exactly the same thing, one half. So we have the probability of shaded and the probability of not shaded, exactly the same likelihood. Is this a uniform or a non-uniform? This one is, let me just check my work here, uniform, right? Uniform probability model. And it's just because the outcomes are the same likelihood. Again, Notice that if you take one half plus one half, the two possible outcomes, one half plus one half comes out to one. And we should always be able to add all of the probability outcomes and they should all come to one because no matter what, when you spin this thing, you're going to get either a shaded region or not with 100% likelihood. So when you add them together, they should add to a probability of one and they do. It's a good double check to make sure your work is correct. All right, let's take a look at problem number three. Jim spins the spinner below. The outcome will be the spinner lands on a region with a letter on it or does not. Is it probability, uh, is it a uniform or non-uniform? So a letter uh, or no letter. So the probability of landing on a letter, it doesn't say shaded or not, it just says letter or no letter. How many letters do we have? We only have two letters out of a total of six. So the probability is two sixths. This reduces to one third when you divide top and bottom by two. Now, what is the probability of no letter? No letter. Well, how many spaces do we have that don't have a letter on it? One, two, that's not a letter, that's a number. One, two, three, four. So four six. When you divide by two here, this reduces to two thirds. Divide by two, divide by two. So the probability of getting a letter is one third and the probability of getting no letter is higher than that. It's two thirds because there are more spaces that don't have letters on them. So is this a uniform or a non-uniform model? This is a non-uniform situation, right? Because the probabilities of the outcomes are not the same. Now, let me ask you, what is the probability here? Two thirds plus the probability there of one third. Two thirds plus one third, same common denominator. Add the numerators, one plus two is three. 3 over 3 is 1. And we, again, find a situation where the outcomes have differing, have probabilities. We add them together, we should get 1 because no matter what, you're going to land on either a letter region 
or a non-lettered region. Those two situations cover the entire thing, so when we add the probabilities together, we're guaranteed to land on one of those, so they should add up to one. All right, let me take these down. We have a few more to wrap up this lesson. All right, problem number four says Meredith puts these marbles shown below in a bag and she pulls one out. The outcome will either be that she pulls out a blue marble or an orange marble. Those are defined as the, the things we're trying to, to take a look at. We don't even care about the shapes. We're just talking about blue versus orange, right? Is this a uniform or non-uniform probability model? Well, what you need to do is ask yourself, what is the probability of actually pulling a blue marble? We have one, two, three, four, five of those out of a total of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So five out of ten reduces to one half. And you can see from what's going on here, the probability, if I can draw a P right, the probability of orange is exactly the same thing. There are five of these orange ones as well out of a total of ten, which means the probability is a half. So the probability of pulling blue is half and the probability of uh, pulling orange is half. And so is this uniform or not? It is a uniform probability uh, uh, situation because the outcomes have the same probability. Now notice when you take this probability plus this one a half plus the half is one and that means that when you pull uh, any marble out of that bag you have a probability of 100% of one of getting either a blue or an orange marble because you add those probabilities together and you get you have to get something so you you get one and one half plus one half does equal one so I've been telling you that over and over again. Now in this case, we weren't even uh, concerned with the shapes. You have to read the problem. The probability of blue versus orange, we calculated based on that. Now that's gonna change here in the next problem where it says Casey puts these marbles in a bag and pulls one out. The outcome will either be that he pulls out an orange marble with a heart or he does not. So that's kind of specific, right? Orange marble with a heart or he does not. So the probability of, I, I don't I want to write orange heart with uh, orange marble with a heart, but that's what the probability is we're calculating. Where are these marbles at? Here are the orange marbles here, and there's only two of them that have a heart. So there's only two ways I can get what I'm looking for here. Two out of a total of what? Ten. There's ten marbles altogether. And this reduces, divide by two, one fifth. Divide top and bottom by two. All right? So this is orange marble with a heart. Now, what is the probability of not getting a uh, orange marble? marble with a heart. Well, there's there's eight other possibilities, right? Because all of these are not orange marbles that have a heart on there. There's eight remaining and eight out of ten total. And so you divide by two, you get four fifths. Divide by two on the top and the bottom. So this is the probability of getting what we're saying in the problem, orange marble with a heart. It's only one fifth and it's much more likely four fifths to actually get uh, when you don't get that situation because there's so many other marbles in here that don't have orange hearts on them, right? But we notice that when we take this probability, four-fifths, and add it to this one, the denominators are the same. One plus four is five. Five over five is one. So they add up again to 100% because we have to pull either an orange marble with a heart or not an orange marble with a heart. You have to get one or the other. So when you add those probabilities together, you should get 100%. So is this uniform or non-uniform? This is non-uniform over here non-uniform because the likelihoods of either getting this thing or not getting this thing, they're not the same. All right, let's take a look at our last problem. Uh, write down one more uniform and one more non-uniform probability model that can be used with these marbles. So we want uniform uh, versus non-uniform. So uh, there are many answers to this and I'm going to, we're going to do mine here, but you might find a different one. So an example of a uniform probability model that I can construct with what we have here is I'm going to find the probability of pulling out a moon or the probability of pulling out a heart. All right, because if I define these as my outcomes, the probability of getting a moon or the probability of getting a heart, all I have to do is figure out the uh, likelihood of both of them. And I see that for the moon situation, there are three moons. And so the probability of pulling out a moon would be three out of 10, right? But the, or I, I should say, the probability of moon would be one, two, three, four, five, five out of 10, right? And the probability of pulling a heart will be one, two, three, four, five out of 10 as well. So the probability of, of getting a moon and the probability of getting a heart is exactly the same. So that would be an example of a uniform uh, probability situation. And finally, let's write down an example of non-uniform. 
Again, there's many examples. You could, you could con construct all kinds of things. We're going to write ours as an example, the probability of getting a blue moon or the probability of getting not a blue moon. Let's just see why that works. If we look at the probability of getting a blue moon, we only have two of these marbles that have a blue moon, right? Two out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So two out of ten, right? We could re reduce that as well. And the probability of not getting a blue moon is going to be everything else. So that's eight out of ten. There's eight marbles that are not blue moons here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. And so the probability of a blue moon is only 2 out of 10, and the probability of not getting a blue moon is 8 out of 10, and those are not the same thing, so it's non-uniform. So in this lesson, we have uh, really kind of dive a little deeper into non-uniform probability models. We talked about it before, but here we just kind of get a little more practice with it with different kinds of scenarios. As it's important as you study real problems to know when it's uniform and when it's not. But notice that whether it's uniform or not, it doesn't change how you calculate the probability. That's always the same. We've been doing it here for these problems. So I'd like you to practice these. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll wrap up the concept of non-uniform uh, probability models. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.